Me by Fred Schroeder. Episode six. Teen years at Grant High School. When people used to say they wished they could go back to the best years of their lives, high school, I'd think they had faulty memories. High school was very frustrating for me. I thought I would like to socialize with the in crowd, but never seemed to be able to make it. We could never afford the in clothes or attend the in clubs, and I think I was overly shy and introverted. Finally, when I discovered that I could run distance races pretty good, I got a Letterman sweater with a big G. Then I was invited to Octo Ducas, an in Letterman's club. It got me a foot in the door, but never real acceptance from the big wheels. However, I made good friends among the not quite in crowd and was able to get dates with the not quite in girls. When we attended the last few class reunions, I noticed that as we aged, most of the barriers had come down. Some of my best friends in high school were Jewish. There were a lot of Jewish kids in our class, and I don't think I ever consciously realized we were supposed to be different. My best friend for a while was Sanford Weisblatt, and I still remember what a bad time he got from one of his teachers, Miss von Winsinger Rode, a German teacher. This was the Hitler era, and her feelings toward Jews were pretty apparent and I'm surprised she got away with that. I didn't really understand all of this at that time. Another of my best friends, also Jewish, was Jerry Bard. Probably my best friend the last couple of years was Jim Wickander, and we still keep in touch. Most of the others I only see when we attend the five-year reunions. Football was the big thing at the time, and Grant only lost one football game during my four years there. We were Oregon State champions three of those four years. My fondest remembrance was the junior year when Grant had to go down to Medford to play the critical semifinal game and they organized a bus trip the night before the game and five busloads of us students traveled all night for two nights to go down and back on the bus and cheer up the team, which was led to believe they could never beat the powerful Medford team. Obviously they did, or it would not have been a fond memory. I tried out first for the JV team and later for the varsity, but I was too small and uncoordinated to make the team. At track, I ran the half mile and sometimes the mile. I usually picked up some second or third place points, but never won a big meet. I weighed 130 or 135 in high school, if you can believe that, and was about five foot 10. I usually attended most high school dances and social events and was a member of the pep club. I got good but not world-class grades. One of the sophomore classes was on careers and we had to choose a potential career and study up and interview people. I chose civil engineering and I guess that sort of steered me into an engineering career. I took all the math they offered, most English classes, one Shakespeare class, shop and jewelry making classes, at least that's all I remember. I was very fortunate, I think, to attend Grant because when we graduated, it was assumed most of us would attend college and I just went along with the crowd on that. Given a choice, I am not sure I would have gone. I started saving money for college from my paper rot days. The summer I was 14, I worked as a page boy at the Multnomah athletic club and after I was let go from that job because I could never find any of the members being paged I worked as a busboy at the Benson Hotel at the time the classiest in Portland that job also did not last too long the summer I was 15 I worked packing berries at the RD Bodle company I hand trucked boxes and barrels of processed berries into the truck and sometimes worked in the cold storage building this job I did much better at because I think I matured a lot between 14 and 15. I started at R.D. Bodel again the following summer, but on July 1st, when I turned 16, I could go to work fighting fires with the Forest Service in Silver Lake, Oregon. I paid, I think, a dollar an hour, and we got overtime when on a fire, and I was really in the chips. The first summer, we lived in a camp right near Silver Lake, and spent most of the time piling brush, 
fighting mosquitoes, and putting out lightning strikes. There was one major fire in the Deschutes forest and we spent a pretty rigorous week fighting that one. The second summer, we lived in tents at our own camp at 7,000 feet. There was a stream running right outside our tent that would freeze over each night. In the morning, we would wake up by jumping into the stream and then warming up by a fire in our 50 gallon oil drum stove. By noon, the temperature at our work site had usually climbed to above 100 degrees. We did fight a couple of major fires that year, but by that time most of us were seasoned veterans and used to the hard work. Our most interesting feat was tracking down a Japanese balloon loaded with incendiary bombs that one of our lookouts saw coming down. This put us in one of the most interesting stories of World War II how the Japanese launched hundreds of balloons from their home country loaded with incendiary bombs intended to set our Oregon forest on fire. A lot of them reached their goal, but none started a major fire. Our military attempted to keep it a secret to not let them know how successful their aim was. The story got out when minister's wife, Elsie Mitchell, and five kids from Sunday school were killed when they found one on a picnic and didn't know what it was. I started skiing when I was in junior year, mainly because my girlfriend at the time was a skier. Never was very good because I was uncoordinated, but I enjoyed it a few weekends a year up until I came to Seattle. In the summer following my junior year, my sister B married Chuck and they headed off to Kansas to finish school. 